And yesterday, the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and he said to me, surrendered. Surrendered. I'd written the whole message, but I just didn't know the name. And he said to me, surrender. And when we talk about singles, the first thing that we click, click, click is marriage. That's the first thing that most of us are thinking about. That's the first thing that we want. That's the first thing that most people, people are hoping to get is, is the need to be married. But I want to, before we go on to anything, establish certain truths for us today. The first truth is this. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him, God, say it. I will make him a helper. Isaiah 34 and verse 16. Search from the book of the Lord and read. None of these shall want her mate. None of these shall lack their mate. None of these shall be desperate, longing, hoping to be married. Because I... From the foundations of the world, before time began, I commanded it. That anyone that would be called my child would already have their marital destiny established. So I want to address a truth in the body of Christ, which is this. As a believer, a child of God, your marital destiny, your spouse has already been established. Before you were formed, God knew your, the lineage after you. He knew your grandchildren. He knew, he knew your grandchildren's children. Do you see how precise God is? So now if he knows your grandchildren, that means he knows the papa that made the grandchildren with you. We, 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 because in our limitation, we read God from our wisdom. And we think that God is boxed in by what we can see. So the enemy is beginning to, because we're not sure, am I going to get married? Am I gonna get? I'm not, am I gonna get married? Because we're not sure about our own marital destinies. Believers are consumed with anxiety, and the devil is using the same anxiety to walk many people into destruction. The whole idea of will I get married, baby? You will get married. The only person that stops you getting married is you. Scripturally. It isn't about will I, it's about if you want and when. And the person that determines when is you. None of this, none of these ones. I promise you, I never had the opportunity to pray to God, where is my husband? Because I was secured in this truth. It wasn't about will I get married. It's about when. And if it's about when, the question therefore is, how do you maximize or do the things that you're supposed to be doing before you get married? Believers should never allow themselves to be consumed with anxiety. Anxiety leads us into trouble. It is in anxiety, you know, <laughs> I have seen in my small time in ministry how people have allowed anxiety to walk, into, to walk them into a relationship that causes them to sacrifice every value. You look at a girl, you think you know better. You look at a man, you think you're about to sacrifice everything you are, what, what have been working for. Everyone wants to advise them. You know better. They sacrifice everything until they themselves become the sacrifice. And you ask them, what was it? Because once you start counseling them in marriage, what was the issue? I already knew. So how do you know and walk into it? <clears throat> because of the anxiety of, will I get married? So you decide that, God, you know what? You ain't good enough at this. I'm going to hook myself up. But the Bible says that Adam didn't even have the ability to ask for a spouse. He didn't have the ability to ask for a wife before he even recognized that he needed one. Before he even recognized that, that he needed a spouse, God gave him. I mean, come on now, how wicked do you think God is? Vicky said, before God gives you, before God does anything, he, he, he meets all the needs. I know of a minister, and he's so precious, he's, he's, he, he, he's wealthy. 
And there was a time it, it came to light that he had blessed someone with a jet. Now, you can bless someone with a jet and curse them at the same time because that jet is a problem if they don't have the money to uphold that. <laughs> but he blesses them with the jet and also the resources to maintain the jet. That shows me that God never gives you a blessing and not give you everything that you need to maintain it. Now, the life that you have, everything that you could ever need, ever, everything you could ever need, thanks be to God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, but we're in heavenly places, so there's something that you need to do to take it from the heavens down. But everything that you could ever need, so relax. Relax. Your marital destiny is sure. Your marital destiny is sure. Not about if you're going to get married, but it's about when. And so if we know that with every blessing God gives us, I want to help you this. Every time God blesses us with something, I spend my entire life when I read the scriptures trying to understand God. <clears throat> because when I understand him, my husband tends to say, I know my wife. I know what she can do, I know what she can't do. I share this many a times and say, when somebody says, oh, um, maybe was well, rude, he says, tell me what she said. Mm -hmm. I said, now that's my wife. <laughs> and she, she is fully capable <laughs> Right? Is there something else? And that's not my wife I, I, I wasn't there But I'm, I can tell you that that's not my wife In the same vein You need to spend our time Trying to understand God from scriptures That's what the Bible is It's to give a, a, us an insight To the person of God So that we can know who he is What he can do and what he can't do Now every time God blesses us he blesses us for a purpose. I will make you a blessing so that you can be a blessing. There is always so that, because. There is always a reason why God does something for us because he's thinking about something else. Now, when we think about marriage, we think about, we think about marriage as to only what we want or about our lives. But every blessing that comes from above has a purpose. Every blessing that comes from above, every blessing, has a purpose. Whether it be your marriage, whether it be your work, whether it be your children, everything God places in your hands, he places in your hand for a reason. So if therefore, marriage is a blessing, because two are better than one, that makes it a blessing. And if it's a blessing, it's not about... If I'm going to get married, but what do I need to do to align myself to ensure that I can be connected to that blessing? Hence the reason I said that you look through the scripture, it's never been about anything other than the individual stopping the blessing from coming into their life. You are the one that determines whether or not you get married. You are the one that determines the blessings that you have been desiring from God. You are the one that determines. Then we want no power. Even when he try it, we are the one that determines whether he wins or not. We are the one that determines every single blessing, whether we live it or whether we simply dream it. We are the ones. So if that is the case, God, I want to get married. I want to. I want. I want to get married. What do I need to do? We've been praying a prayer all wrong. So James says, you have prayed, but you haven't received. Why? Because you pray amiss. You've been asking God, God, where is my husband? And God said, your husband is right where he is. You need to get there. Mm. There is nothing that God, you are asking God for that he hasn't already answered. 
But how do I align myself? Come on, you got to grow up spirit, spiritually. Father, I, I already know that you have created my husband. But since I don't have him, what is it that you need me to do? What is it that you are waiting on for me to do? For me to walk into that manifestation of a spouse. So therefore, in your, your single phase, your, your greatest search, which has now become the... the this, is, this is the... You can't have sex... So I'm going to go on a lifelong journey of finding a husband. <laughs> that, that's the church now. That, that's, what's, that's what's consuming everybody. But the greatest search of a single isn't your spouse. Your greatest search should be your purpose. The greatest energy or the most energy you spend as a single should never be your social life. Come on now, you're killing yourself. I love this girl because working with her, she come from my she we cut from the same cloth. I, I say to her, Vicky, you know, take it easy on them. She's like, no, it don't make no sense. I've been writing exams, I've been doing this, I've been doing that. They don't need to, you don't need to take it easy. You need to move. There's no excuse. <laughs> but we can socialize in our generation. Take it easy. How do we? How do I balance? Balance what? What are you doing? <laughs> what exactly are you doing? Work, sleep, work, sleep. What are you trying to balance? They tell you, come serve God, I'm balancing my life. Come on now, someone's going to kill your destiny, this, this generation. They will kill you by the foolishness. That the most, the, the, the thing that should consume you isn't your social life. In your single day, the thing that should consume you is the search for your purpose. And the, the drive to live it out. Why? <laughs> Purpose takes the greatest... As one that is living in my purpose, and anyone who is living in their purpose will tell you this, it takes great level of strength mentally and spiritually. Now this is not time for you to now get married and that's when you start looking for mm -mm. Let me help you now. Some brothers going to be like, no. You never told me this when we were single, so I didn't sign up for this, no. And then you're going to start seeking for counseling because while you were supposed to be single searching your, 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 you know that will help you clear some things. Because when a brother comes and he starts telling, because you know where you are going. When he comes and says, I'm going, he says, nah, this, this is Contrary to where I know I'm supposed to be going. The same way a sister comes and says to you, this person, you say, no, no, I'm going into this line of work. You say, so if you are so sure that that's, this is who you don't want to be, then I know this is not the lady for me. Purpose is what gives you precision in the decisions that you make for your life. Oh, you're so pretty. Should we go on a date? Show. <laughs> By the time you know it, your emotions are up in a situation, yeah. but you didn't even know that you're supposed to have declined this because you didn't even know what you were supposed to be, be valuing. You didn't even know what yours was. So everything was good and that's when people stop because you know what? Purpose for a child of God will come knocking on your door one day. Right? It will come knocking on, on your door when you're married with three children and your pastor starts preaching that message hot and you're thinking, nah man, I need to spend my life doing something. And then you're not saying, baby, I came up with this thing. And your husband looking at you like, for real? <laughs> you didn't come up with nothing because you have three kids. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Anybody that sees my life wonders why or how I do it, my husband signed up to it. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> when we were dating, it was, uh, can this change? No. Can this change? Yes. <laughs> can this change? Okay, can everybody go take a time out to, to decide whether or not they want to go into this? But everybody knew what they were getting into. Yeah. When my husband gets up in the, in, on, on, on a Sunday and he leaves the house at, at, at 6 o'clock in the morning saying he's going to church, I don't say no word because I signed up to it. Do you know the problem with most people? They never signed up to things and now life is trying to force them to live the life that they never wanted to live. But why? Because they never spent the time. Everything, time, every, every, every season has its purpose. Every time has its purpose. They never spent the time in their days of their singleness to do what was appropriate for that season. Discover your purpose. Discover your purpose. Discover your purpose. 
And so the Bible says here, the Bible says here, in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, for this reason was the Son of Man made manifest. You know, every single one of us, we look at that and we think, well, Jesus, no, it's what about you too. Every single one of us are for this reason. We are walking, breathing for this reason. Every single one of us came here for a, for a precise point. There was, a, there was something in God's mind that God wanted to accomplish through us. We are walking, breathing for this reason. Jesus wasn't the only one that was sent to accomplish something. Jesus wasn't the only one that was sent to accomplish something. You are a for this reason. God wants to use you and your life to checkmate the devil. He's trying to use your life to outwit the plans and the, the, of the enemy and the kingdom of darkness. He's trying to use your life to, to inspire a generation. He's trying to use your life to set free a, 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 a lineage of people. He's trying to use you for, for a, particular, a, a particular reason. But because we don't know it, we get frustrated. For this reason, your for this reason is a legacy. And God shared something with me recently. It's a legacy that lives on after you have gone. I keep saying that. We're not supposed to come on the earth and we die when we go. But we are so consumed by or we are so limited by Maximum 120. I, 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 I had a nice car, had a nice job, I married a great guy. But we don't think about life after we've gone. Mm -hmm. Your for this reason is the legacy that lives on. Every single one of us was supposed to be written into the, to the hall of fame of the earth. We come and, we, and, and the earth knows. A for this reason. A for this reason. Uh, for this reason, we are the, the, the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We come and we enhance the earth and then we go. The earth fills our presence before we go. Uh, for this reason, purpose is so powerful. It is so, I can't, I can't explain it. It is so powerful because it is, the, it is one of the most crucial aspects to getting all your needs met. Purpose. The things that you bring to God to receive, you will receive because you are not in the place of purpose. Purpose is what approves those blessings. Anybody has a work and they, they give you an allowance or something like that, right? I used to work you know, when I was in the um, corporate world and um, they would give us a budget. You just get a credit card. And that credit card was with me, my name on it, you know, 24-7. Well, watch me go spend that credit card on, on Sunday after just go 805 or go to, to Nando's and just, that's going to be a problem because I can't, that, that, that blessing isn't authorized for that purpose. But I could go wherever I want to go in life, as long as I am. I could be in a five, I'd go on a business trip, sit in a five-star hotel, never question it. Why? Because I am on it for this reason. So the, the blessing is aligned to that purpose. I'm there. So I'm, I, I'm allowed. You're sitting there praying for a husband for what? For what? For what? 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 What do you want the husband for? Please tell me. You're praying for a wife. Why? Because you just desire respect. <laughs> want someone else. He's a man of the house. God ain't got no God to, to, to give for free like that. <laughs> what is your for this reason? Heaven is sitting there waiting and, they, and it's not like it's, your name is there. Your spouse is written right there and says this one belongs to this person. But God is waiting on you. Purpose is so powerful because it is purpose. I can ask anything of God as a they, you ask my team, they walk with me crazy. I will ask crazy of God, but as long as it's aligned with a purpose, he approves it. He backs it and he provides for it. But I can't, you can't just get up and be asking. He ain't no Santa. 
neither is he a genie. So what is your for this reason? What is your for this reason? But you know, in our generation, we, we are good at asking God, God, show me my purpose. Show me my purpose. We don't hear anything from God now because we've made purpose about self. I want to be fulfilled. I want to do great things. I want to accomplish great stuff. But God took me to a scripture. First Samuel chapter 1. And there was a woman called Hannah. You could want all you want. God ain't moved by the fact that you're left out of a movement. Oh, everyone's getting married. Everyone's accomplishing great stuff. Everyone is opening a business. God ain't moved by our momentary needs for validation. So we're sitting there saying, God, show me my purpose. But your foundational reason shuts the mouth of God. Because it's about self. It's about you and what you want to feel like. And what you want to accomplish. And what you want to do. Purpose has never been about us. It's always been about God. Let me help you something. I'll correct this. Right? You are never fulfilled by purpose. You are fulfilled by your identity in Christ. Hmm? You are never fulfilled by what you do on the earth. You are fulfilled by who you are on the earth. So purpose isn't what fulfills you. Purpose is about you serving God with your life. So Hannah says, God, you know what? She's sitting there and she's crying because she's being mocked at. Just like some of us, we, we're sitting here and the frustration of watching everybody accomplish but us not accomplish is driving us insane. Everybody, can, you, can, you, can, you can witness to that, you can agree with that. There's sometimes just watching people, especially that Instagram, this is, this is, a, this is a joy thief. <laughs> right? So you think to yourself, you sit there, you don't even know where it come from. But you see Sophia, she posting new job, new car, now she got a husband, now she got a baby. Jesus, when are you going to remember me? <laughs> Holly was sitting there thinking, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not concerned. And Hannah was sitting there and she was like, why would I not get pregnant? This woman popping out babies like it's like a popcorn or something like a pop, 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 pop. And I'm sitting there, I'm just like, give me one shot. Heaven's mouth was closed because it was about her and what she wanted. But watch this woman. She got to a point where she said, God, I got you. Give me a child and I'll give him back to you. Heaven said, hold up now. <laughs> hold up now. You say, what? I'm sitting here looking for something and you're giving me an opportunity. Come on now, what do you want? You want a son? Boof. Nothing that we want is difficult for God to provide. How many men? Just choose. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? But you think about the craziness of it all. People are sitting there and they can't find a spouse. You must know that there is a hand of something higher than you. Because they can't find a spouse. Meanwhile, there is a man next to them. The man is praying for a husband or a wife. And the wife is praying for a husband. They sitting like next to each other can't get in a relationship. Because the heavens are shut. Because if it's man, plenty. If it's woman, now that contour is making all of them look fine now, so plenty. <laughs> plenty. Do you understand what I'm saying? So why is it that we still struggle with that aspect? The heavens haven't opened up here. Now God is waiting for you to say, okay, now hold on a minute. God, I want you to use my life. She said this thing like, give me a son, I'm a mother. Give me a son and I will give him back to you. I don't know what you're going to do with him. We say, yeah, God, use my life, but can you please send me to the banking industry? Or, you know, that it looks real good. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, we have limitations. We have boundaries. God, use me, but in this sense. God is saying, no, 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 I want a blank check. You don't get to tell me what I need. So I'm not ready to talk to you until... Imagine now. I mean, sometimes you just have the reason. Why are you thinking that angels thinking these foolish people down there? Come on now. <laughs> because you just have the reason. Imagine you go 
to a, a place or an organization, and you say to them, okay, they, they post something out there and they say, I'm looking, we're looking for a HR manager. We're looking, what we need is a HR manager. And you come up in their workplace and you say, thank you very much, you apply for the post, you come and they give you time, and you say, do you know what, I don't feel like doing HR. What I actually want you to send me to do is sales, because that's what I like and I'm good at. <laughs> Security. <laughs> Because you don't get to tell me what my needs are. God is waiting for us to say, do you know what, God, I'm surrendered. Whatever you want to do with me. Wherever you want to send me. When you watch people do and say stuff like that, you will see somebody who is a great, has a great job in banking. Pack up bag and go and do something in Africa in a mission or pay them junkies. Why? Because God said, they said to God, God, use me. Not knowing where God will send them. And, well, you know, God said, you sure? All right, off to Africa you go. <laughs> so it's not a prayer for the faint hearted. If you don't mean it, don't say it. And God already checked you, He knows. He said, God used me a on the floor. He's like, You're not ready. Because by the time I open up, in fact, He catch you up. Because by the time, <laughs> seriously, by the time someone says to you in your workplace, they're just sitting there in your church, they're just saying, There is a missionary post open. And your ears like, <laughs> That's the time you'll be sitting there speaking to Sandra and did you see that girl's weed? Your ear's not ready to hear that. And so the worshiper is here for Lord use me. Jesus said, Really? I'm trying to use you. But God is saying, give me a blank check with your life. Give me a blank check with your life, and I, I will jump into your situation right away. Say to me, God, use me, send me where you want to. Ain't about what I want. It's not about how I want to be, how I want to feel. It's not about what, what I want to gain out of life. I don't want, we're chasing fame, glory, and wealth. And we call it, a, I'm then on a journey to seek my purpose. No, you're not. But God is waiting on us. Why? Because what he has for you outlives this moment. It, I, I, you know, some people have given up everything because of the momentary trend. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is that the moment changes, the, the time goes the opposite direction. You left your work to vlog Jesus, I hope you weren't you. All of a sudden, that's not in anymore. Because we are moved by the moment. Meanwhile, what God has placed on your, your head lives not just the it lives not while just you're here, but even after you've gone, it's still speaking. Come on now, black people have been free for how many years? And yet Martin Luther is still relevant and celebrated. Yes. Why? After you've gone. After you've gone. Never about us, never about us, never about us. And Jesus said, you know what? Purpose costing me everything. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. How many times have you asked yourself, is this thing that you call purpose costing you? What exactly is it costing you? Don't you know whether it's for real? What is it? You tell somebody, oh, come serve in the church. Well, you say, well, how much am I going to get paid? And then all of a sudden, what you just said? Lord, use me. Ask yourself, oh, come serve, but nobody's going to know your name. They go disappearing. Why? Because it's, it's the glory. I want to be validated. I want people to see that I'm doing something great. That's what I'm chasing, not purpose. Please don't get it twisted. And we think that heaven is being mocked, but really we are the ones being mocked. Because the unanswered prayers is what's frustrating us. Just surrender. Just surrender. Just, just, just say to me, God, I, I, I want to give my life to you. You use it. Whichever way you want. But you know the funny thing is, we even think that's a harsh prayer to pray. Because it costs. I don't know what he's going to do. Now imagine me, I've got three children, saying, you know what, God, I, I give you my child to do what you please. It sounds sweet because we're doing dedication now. We, we your baby father, I give it back to you. But we, we don't know what it means where you say physically, I'm going to give you my child. I carry that child for nine months. I've bonded with that child, but I don't know what the outcome of that child is. As a parent, my job is to protect and to secure the future, but I don't even know that I can do that because I'm giving you my child. That costs a lot. That costs a lot. 
So how many of us are willing to say, God, you know what? I'm scared to pray that prayer, but I mean it. I'm, I'm scared to give you a blank check because the unforeseen makes me afraid, but I mean it. But you know why? We won't trust God, but we'll trust other things. We, wherever, wherever you serve God with your life or not, the truth for God is that our life is serving something. We're either giving our life to God to serve or we're serving money. And money in prisons. We're either giving our life to God or we're serving the, the desperate need for fame in our generation. And fame destroys. We're either giving our life to God as a blank check saying, I don't know what you're going to do with it. <coughs> or we're serving the desperate need for men to validate us. And that only leads to confusion and frustration because today they think you're great and tomorrow they don't think nothing of you. But we're so comfortable giving our lives, not knowing what's going to come of it, to things that guarantee they will destroy us. But we are afraid to give our lives but as a blank check to God when we know his character is too good to cause us to be destroyed. So I'll ask you a question today. Who do you want to give your life to? Who do you want to write your life to? Because the truth is that you are. You're giving your life to something and to someone, but who? <coughs> and God said to me, if they will come and surrender and say to me, Lord, my life is a blank check. You do whatever you want to do with it. I will give them a legacy that touches lives, that lives on after they have gone, that sets the captive free. I have humanity on my, on my mind and I want to use them. But I want them to give me a blank check. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Everybody wise to your feet. Lord, I surrender. There's a song that they used, well, they used to sing when I was real young, and he, I believe it was Ron Kenobi, he used to sing and say, you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Too many of you in new school, you don't know that, that's the kind of song we used to sing growing up. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. That's, that's a powerful, God use me. God, use me. Take my life. Do what you want to do with it. Just use me. You use me, and I don't want to use you. You use me. If you can use anything in this world. And I remember when I was going, I, when I first came into the faith, that's why I used to lie on the floor and say, God, use me. Is he using me now? Yes, he is. Am I always comfortable with it? No, I'm not. But I am I satisfied in, in going out and knowing that at the end of the day, the person who has sent me, I can go back and return to him and be fulfilled to say that while you sent me, I accomplished it. Because we live in this moment, we forget eternity. <laughs> Let nobody confuse you, eternity for real. And you are going to meet your maker one day. Will you be able to stand confidently before him? Unashamed, saying, you know what, God, you used me. I was on this earth and I gave you my life. And everything you wanted to do, you did through me. If you can use anything, Lord, this is my life. I surrender it, Lord. Use me. Use me. Use me, Lord. Before we go into a time of prayer and worship, I just want to give a quick opportunity. To anyone that's here and you think, okay, you know, I'm not even saved. I'm not even sure of my eternity. Oh, I used to be sure, but I walked away from God because the walk with him was tired. It was just weighing me down. It, it got too tiresome. I want to connect back to God because I want to lay my life down at his, at his feet. And I want to say, truly, God, use me. I want to be secure. I want to not give my life to the world. I want to give my life to God. If you want to say that prayer, you want to run back to Jesus Christ, just lift up your hands and I will pray with you in the gathering of the brethren. Quickly, right where you are. Just raise up your hands and I'll pray with you right where you are. Say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I return back to you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. 
I return back to you surrendered. Forgive me my sins. Lord, I pray that you write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And on the last day, I will be glorified with Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody put your hands together for Jesus.